Thank you. So our next speaker is Patricia Schulenberg, who's a program manager for Save the River. Patricia earned her interdisciplinary MS in evolution, ecology, and behavior from the University of Buffalo, focusing her graduate studies on Great Lakes ecology and stream restoration. She worked for the U.S. Department of Agriculture, the Western New York PRISM, Invasive Species Management, and the New York State Parks as the GLRI Dunes and Wetlands Restoration Coordinator. She founded the region's first volunteer monitoring and training program for the federally endangered Great Lakes Piping Plover and is a board director for the Eastern Lake Ontario's Dunes Foundation. Patricia integrates wildlife conservation, research and habitat restoration, with K-12 education and stewardship in her role as program manager for Save the River. Where's Patricia? Yep, oh, coming this way. Thank you, I'm following Barbara's lead. I have my timer as well because I know we're all hungry for lunch. But um, my name is Patricia Schulenberg. Um, I'm a biologist and educator first and foremost, and I'm really excited to be here as your program manager for Save the River today. Um, I've got about 10 minutes to talk about uh, 10 years of uh, our K through 12 education programs and environmental stewardship. So we'll give it a go. All right, so um, as Save the River has uh, initiated our K K through 12 environmental education programs. Uh, I'm going to give you an overview of our education programs. Uh, we're moving into some stewardship projects with our youth as well. Uh, we've got a lot of great curriculum resources and educator trainings that I'll cover as well. And we'll talk about uh, our partners, our volunteers and our community support. And of course, education is our greatest opportunity to give an aerobicable gift to the next generation. So where do we work? We're along the entire 110 miles of the St. Lawrence River. And our youth and education programs not only cover uh, Jefferson and St. Lawrence counties here in New York State, but they also cover Ontario, Canada as well. So since its creation in 2009, uh, we reach about an average of 1,200 students each year, which is quite an undertaking. Uh, our programs include Haas the Great Blue Heron, which is a storybook geared for K through three grades. Uh, we've got a Junior Riverkeeper program, uh, in-school presentations, on the water field trips, and a lot of stewardship projects. So we'll go through each one. So Haas the Great Blue Heron, The Beginning of an Adventure, is a children's book written by Julianne Flora, Heather White, and Diane Bauer. Uh, this is a K through 12, uh, or I'm sorry, a K through three program geared uh, towards those students. And the book is available on Amazon. So if you've got anybody that you need a Christmas or a birthday gift for, uh, we do have uh, proceeds that go to save the river. So we reach on annual about 380 students each year. Um, it's a book reading, but it, it's accompanied by an interactive program as well. Uh, it, uh, uh, our curriculum is based on river ecology and great blue heron biology. Students actually go through stations and uh, enact what a great blue heron would be seeing out on the river. They reach their arms out and see what it's like to compare their wingspan to a great blue heron. So we try to make it as educational and interactive as possible. Um, it was volunteer and docent developed, so completely volunteer run, which is an amazing accomplishment for any organization. And of course, the pro proceeds fund our Save the River education programs. Our Junior Riverkeeper program uh, is a K through 12 version of our Adult Riverkeeper program. Uh, it's interactive, and I use a lot of games and activities to uh, address different issues going on in our river. Uh, we teach students and our adults how to monitor and report indicators of river health using invasive species, biological indicators, wildlife die-offs, uh, pollution, and algal blooms. How to recognize these threats and how to report them. Oh, I'm sorry, and each year we reach about 330 students through this program. 
We do a lot of, we do a variety of school presentations as well. Um, whether it's talking to students about watersheds and pollution, here they are making a watershed model, a lot of fun. Aquatic invasive species, as you can see, we've got some Asian carp you can kind of make out on the screen back there. Uh, plastics and microplastic pollution. Uh, if you recognize uh, on the last picture, that's actually one of our conference speakers from last year, Sam Mason. She actually came out to Carthage Middle School for their World Oceans Day presentations and uh, talked to the students about our impacts on micro, uh, plastics and microplastics. So we're really making those connections between our educators and those researchers that are, that are coming to our Save the River programs. And each year we reach about 385 students through our school presentations. Our on the water field trips, we take uh, students to the Antique Boat Museum, the Minnie Anthony Common Nature Center. Here we've got a group of students that are actually doing a food chain and bioaccumulation uh, game that was developed by New York State DEC. Rock Island Lighthouse, one of my favorites. And of course, the SUNY ESF Biological Station. Uh, one, of a, one of our amazing field trips that we do with our students, we actually take students out to those uh, researchers. We get them involved in learning what um, our researchers are doing out on the water and hopefully inspiring them one day to uh, carry the torch. We're, um, we're transitioning into project-based and service learning opportunities as well. Uh, this was a project that was done uh, a few years ago uh, with uh, Thousand Islands Biological Station and Dr. Farrell, where the students are actually removing cattails, exposing the native seed bank, and um, learning on how water levels affects different vegetation and wetlands. I believe this was Thousand Islands High, sc high School or Thousand Islands Middle School. We do water quality monitoring with our students as well. Uh, here we have Indian River Lakes Conservancy Kids Camp students uh, IDing macroinvertebrates, which are an indicator of water quality. So these are really hands-on projects that we're bringing to our students. We have a sturgeon, annual sturgeon release that we participate in as well. So students are actually learning from U.S. Fish and Wildlife, or DEC, um, about sturgeon life cycles and actually participating in a juvenile release. Here we have.